Now let's discuss question number 55. It states that an article was purchased for rupees 3717 including GST of 8%. If discount on list price is 10%, then the list price in terms of A is out of these four options. Here in the first option I have 41,300 upon 100 plus A. In second option I have 4,13,000 upon 100 plus A. In third option I have 100 plus A upon 4,13,000 while in fourth option I have 4,13,000 upon 100 minus A. That means I need to express the list price in terms of A. So let's consider that the list price of this given article is rupees X. So if I consider list price to be rupees X, then the discount on the list price is 10%. So if the discount on the list price is 10%, then you clearly get the selling price of the article equal to list price minus the discount of 10%. This simplifies to the value 9x upon 10. So this is the selling price and as we know, the article was purchased for rupees 3717 including GST of A percent. So if I consider this selling price and I add up here A percent of this that is 9x upon 10 into A upon 100. I get the total selling price including GST of A percent that is 3717. Let's simplify this. Here when you simplify this you get a clear picture that this reduces to 9x upon 1000 and here I get 100 plus A equal to 3717. Let's simplify and transpose rest of the quantities to the other side and get the value of X. So when I do when I transpose it to the next side, I get here 3717 into 1000 upon 9 into 100 plus A. So you can clearly find that 9 reduces here 3717 413 times and this gives me a value of X equal to 4 lakh 13,000 upon 100 plus A. So this is the list price in terms of the variable A. So we had to figure out the list price out of these four options and you can clearly find I have obtained the list price that is X equal to 4,13,000 upon 100 plus A which is clearly found here in option number 2. So, you can definitely mark here the answer for this question as option 2. I hope it's clear to you. Let's take up our next question. Here question number 56 states that the sum of the first 13 odd numbers is out of these four options where options are 144, 182, 169 and 196. When I talk about the formula to obtain sum of the first n odd numbers that is equal to n square. That means when you are talking about sum of first 13 odd numbers, this is equal to 13 square and square of 13 is clearly given by 169. So I get a clear answer for this question in option number 3. You can definitely mark here the answer to be option 3. I hope it is clear to you. Let's take up our next question. Here I have this question number 57 which states that which of the following cannot be the unit digit of cube of a single digit prime number where the options are 8, 3, 7 and 1. So let's try to figure out the answer for this question. Here we are talking about single digit prime numbers and single digit prime numbers are 2, 3, 5 and 7 and when you take up the cube of these single digit prime numbers here you get 8, here you get 27, here you obtain 125 and here you obtain 343. So now we have to locate here the 
unit digit of cube of the single digit prime number. Here the unit digit is 8, here it is 7, here it is 5 and here it is 3. And the question states which of the following cannot be the unit digit of cube of a single digit prime number. I can clearly find that 8 is there, 7 is there and 3 is also there, but 1 is not as the unit digit of cube of a single digit prime number. So, the correct answer for this question is option number 4. You can definitely mark here the answer for this question as option 4. I hope it is clear. Let us take up our next question.